Hi again, everyone. Dr. Vincent Lau here from Critical Care Western coming at you with another case of uh, POCUS Hemodynamics Series, uh, co-authoring with Dr. Robert Arnfeld. The third case of the series is going to be uh, acute coronary syndrome and cardiogenic shock. So again, visit our website at westernsono.ca for a primer on stroke volume determination prior to delving into this uh, hemodynamic series. So this is a case of a female who's pregnant uh, who presents with a VFR risk, uh, CPR times 30 minutes and ROSC after that, uh, shock times 8 and epi times 8 after 30 minutes. Um, intubated and transferred uh, by EMS to the ICU, hypotensive still on norepi of 10, vaso 2.4, and ongoing hypotension, uh, blood pressure 90 over 50, heart rate 90s, uh, ACPC, uh, backup rate of 14, pressure control 12, PEEP of 10, and FIO2 of uh, 70%, satting only 93%, and afebrile otherwise. So laboratories wise, CBC was otherwise normal, lights were normal, creatinine had jumped uh, up to 100 from 30. Uh, PTT was otherwise 60, secondary to heparin drip that was running for a possible ACS. Uh, chest x-ray reveals bilateral pulmonary edema, tropes, uh, T's greater than 3400, CK's greater than 2000, and e EKG revealed uh, normal sinus rhythm with anterior and inferior ST elevation MI, and Q waves already coming out in the anterior and inferior leads on EKG. Lactate was slightly elevated at 3.4. ABG showed uh, normal pH of 740, PCO2 35, bicarb of 20. Uh, PO2 is only 65 again on the FIO2 of 70% or base X was minus 3.4. This was her chest x-ray uh, post intubation and again it shows bilateral pulmonary edema. And this is the EKG uh, primarily showing anterior as well as lateral uh, ST elevation as well as some inferior ST elevation as well with Q waves anteriorly and inferiorly. So again, this patient went to the cath lab uh, with spontaneous query dissection diagnosed uh, in the RCA and proximal LAD, and they were unable to stent this anatomy secondary to the dissection. And as part of our point of care workup, we can do an abdominal ultrasound to look for the fetus, and here we see the fetal heart. In order to get the heart rate, we can put an M mode across it and then trace out the spectral Doppler. And so we get spectral Doppler information from our M mode, as seen here. And this representation of movement of the fetal heart. We go from either peak to peak, or in this case, trough to trough. And then we measure out these two calipers. And then the machine calculates 150 beats per minute as our fetal heart rate. So it means that the baby is currently alive at this time. So getting to the POCUS questions, the uh, question was uh, cardiogenic shock, plus or minus any other causes. The patient was only on uh, norepinephrine and vasopressin. Was there a role for inotropy? Uh, we wanted to figure out what her current EF was. And uh, given that we know that her chest x-ray looked uh, wet uh, in keeping with uh, pulmonary edema, secondary to CHF, we wanted to confirm that with uh, B lines throughout the uh, lung fields. So getting to the images themselves, so looking at the left mid base, uh, the patient has otherwise a uh, B-line pattern throughout with a ring down effect coming down from the pleural line, sliding along otherwise, indicating no pneumothoraces. Same can be seen on the left apical view, primarily B-line pattern. On the right hand side again, primarily B-line pattern coming down uh, from the pleural line as a ring down effect, right apex as well. And right base shows again curtain sign, no pleural fusions, no consolidation. So again, visit the Western Sonos website as to uh, lung signs, including B lines, which are vertical hyperechoic lines uh, that project down from the pleural line uh, as a ring down effect. They extend to the bottom of the screen, and these signs are basically of a fluid in the interalveolar septum, which can accumulate before fluid is actually in the alveolus themselves. So a generalized B line pattern represents an interstitial syndrome similar to ground glass on CT, and the differential diagnosis uh, can be CHF, ARDS, early pneumonia, or ILD. So in this patient, given that the patient looks like to be in cardiogenic shock, the most likely cause is CHF at this point. So getting to the peristernal lung axis, we see a, uh, a lung artifact coming into view, but we see that the LV looks uh, moderate to severely depressed. Uh, patient otherwise has no pericardial fusion to note. Uh, colored uh, across the mitral valve shows a whiff, uh, probably mild MR at this point, and the patient also has no AI to note. Peristernal short axis, we see that the patient has, again, moderate to severe LV dysfunction. The lateral wall is otherwise preserved, but has anteroseptal uh, akinesis and probably inferior and lateral wall hypokinesis. Moving to the uh, subcostal view, we see a uh, right-sided, primarily uh, pericardial fusion. Uh, the patient does have 
uh, moderate uh, RV dysfunction as well. And the IVC looks otherwise plethoric in this view, no respiratory collapse on an intubated patient otherwise. So as a teaching point, this is a peristernal short axis view cartoon uh, to outline uh, what we would see in cross section on our echocardiogram at the papillary muscle level. We have the septum here, which it can be split uh, even further into the anterior septum as well as the inferior septum. We have the anterior wall here and immediately opposite to it should be the inferior wall. Uh, the lateral wall um, to the outside on the free wall here and uh, a merging of the inferior and lateral walls you get the posterior wall which is also known as the infralateral wall. So again we see here that uh, we had a plethoric IVC from before that measures out at 2.5 centimeters. So getting to our pocus hemodynamics, we can see a apical five chamber here, uh, which shows uh, mild MR here, no AI, a blue jet of uh, color across the LVOT. So we can definitely throw our pulse wave uh, Doppler across the LVT to calculate our VTI. And we get a LVOT diameter 2.2 uh, centimeters. And we are able to calculate out a VTI across uh, using our equal sign uh, pulse wave Doppler across the LVOT. Uh, a VTI of 13.5 centimeters, uh, again lower than our normal of 18 to 20. Uh, at a heart rate of 98, we get a cardiac output uh, with this LVOT diameter of 5.1 liters per minute. So again, volume of the cylinder, we can calculate our stroke volume to be 52.2 cc's per beat, again lower than normal and we have a cardiac output again of 5.1 liters. So in the case of uh, supporting this patient's blood pressure, what can we augment in terms of cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance? The only thing we have on right now is levofed of 10 and vaso of 2.4 for systemic vascular resistance. But we know the cardiac output is stroke volume times by uh, heart rate. Uh, so is there anything we can augment there? Uh, again, the patient has beeline pattern throughout the lung fields and the IVC, which is plethoric. So it's very unlikely that giving this patient further fluids uh, would be beneficial as we could worsen CHF. Uh, so it's likely that as long as the pressure's, uh, patient's pressure could tolerate it, we could try some uh, diuresis in, in terms of Lasix. Again, afterload uh, is currently being augmented uh, in terms of systemic vascular resistance from the uh, norepi and vaso, but uh, we would actually recommend probably decreasing the amount of uh, uh, afterload uh, given that the patient has a poor ejection fraction. So what we could add on at this time is inotropy and, uh, and contractility with a uh, inotropic agent like uh, dovinuine or milrinone. So again, our recommendations would be that given the patient's B lines and IVC full diuresis if the uh, blood pressure would allow, we would maintain the norepine vaso for the time being. We would try to attempt to reduce it uh, for afterload reduction, thereby uh, allowing the heart to rest and decrease its myocardial uh, oxygen consumption. And we'd add on an inotrope and chronotrope at this time, uh, likely dobutamine, given that the patient uh, is already hypotense and we don't want them too inodilated with neuronome. So in terms of case resolution, this female who's uh, ROSC 30 minutes um, secondary to VF or rest who's pregnant was started on dobutamine at 10 mics per kg per min and uh, heart rate increased from 90s to 110, systolic blood pressure increased to 120s and we were actually able to wean the norepi down from 10 to 2 and vaso 2.4 as well. So again, we met our uh, targets of uh, increasing inotropy and chronotropy. We were able to afterload reduce the patient by taking them down off uh, high, higher doses of levofed. And we were actually, with the pressure being better, be able to diurese the patient on a LASIK strip of 2.5 milligrams per hour drip. Creatinins came down from 100 down to 80s, and our, uh, and our central venous O2 sat got better from 55% um, to 67%, indicating uh, better cardiac output and uh, oxygen extraction. Uh, with the diuresis as well, the FIO2, uh, given the CHF on chest x-ray, as well as uh, lung pocus, uh, got better where the uh, O2 requirements went down from 70% to 50%. So again, thank you for joining us for this uh, POCUS Advanced Hemodynamics series. Uh, please check out uh, westernsano.ca for the primer on stroke volume determination before delving into this series. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you very much. Take care.